President Trump's first 100 days are off to a rocky start. A new ambassador president is inaugurated and the country celebrates Black History Month. All of these stories plus much more on this special edition of RWN Square, the right news the right way. Hello, Richard Wright, and welcome to this week's edition of RWN Squared. That's Richard Wright Network News. I'm Joshua Mitchell. And I'm Tierra Gordon. I know you may be surprised to see two juniors behind the anchor desk this week. But if the seniors can't handle it, we'll be more than glad to take over. So let's get to it. President Trump is having a hard time getting his administration up and running smoothly. Here's the story. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States... With just a few weeks in office, our 45th president, Donald Trump, is off to the races as he strives to make America great fellow again. Americans. In just a short time, he is already having a pretty rocky start with the resignation of his national security advisor, Michael Flynn, who held talks with Russian officials before Trump was sworn in office, and then lied to Vice President Pence about those talks. The president's newly confirmed Secretary of Education, Bessie DeVoice, was blocked by protesters while trying to enter a D.C. school, and Trump's travel ban was put on hold by a federal appeals court, allowing citizens from seven majority Muslim countries to continue to travel to the U.S., despite Trump's executive order last month. These mishaps have left President Trump furious and taking his anger out on the media. Anti-Semitic acts were threatening to... You see, he said he was going to ask a very simple, easy question. And it's not. It's an important It's not. Not a, not a simple question. Not a fair question. Okay, sit down. I, I understand the rest of your question. So here's the story, folks. Uh, number one, I am the least anti-Semitic person that you've ever seen in your entire life. We lived in a divided nation. And I am going to try. I will do everything within my power to fix that. I want to thank everybody very much. It's a great honor to be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have no connection to Russia. Why don't you on a somewhat positive note, President Trump was able to nominate Judge Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court, filling a seat that has been vacant for over so a year following the death of Justice Antonin Scalia. Stay tuned to RWN as we track the first 100 days of President Donald Trump's administration. I'm Tia Gordon, reporting for RWN Square. This country inaugurated its 45th president, and RWPCS inaugurated its third. Eugene Haynes has the story. On Wednesday, February 15th, RWPCS held its second annual ambassador inauguration. During the event, the gavel was passed from one administration to the next as former Vice President Germany Ray bid farewell and our new President Mia Graves along with Vice President Tierra Gordon, Secretary Imani Romney, Treasurer Davon Harris and Keeper of Peace Joshua Mitchell accepted their new roles. I got a chance to catch up with Mia Graves and here's what she had to say about her goals as our new president. Um, what do you hope to achieve as the president of the ambassadors? One thing I hope to achieve is to make sure that everybody has a voice. Like I said in my speech, I want everybody's voice heard, so that's what I'm working towards. Basically being more interactive with the students, getting to know what they want, what they like, and basically just try to work towards that. Okay, so as far as um, previous presidents, what inspiration will you take from them? Um, I would say I would just take is their leadership that they had. They had the courage and they had responsibility and that's what I want. I want to make sure that I'm on top of things and I'm also working hard and doing what I have to do. Well, you've heard it here first. I'm Eugene Haynes reporting for RWN. February is recognized nationally as Black History Month. Imami Romney has more on this story. Black History Month, also known as African American History Month in America, is celebrated annually to highlight important people and events in the history of African Americans. Black History Month began as Negro History Week in 1926, created by Carter G. Woodson, a noted African American writer and historian who worked to preserve the history of African Americans and accumulated a collection of thousands of artifacts and publications. This Black History Month, RWN pauses to highlight black broadcast journalists making history today. Tamron Hall is an American broadcast journalist. Hall was formerly the national news anchor for NBC News and Daysa anchor for MSNBC, 
and is currently a co-host of Today's Take, the third hour of the Today Show on CBS. Cameron Hall continues to break barriers for African-American girls who aspire to be nationally syndicated journalists. Another journalist paving the way for others on national TV is CNN's Don Lemon. Lemon currently hosts CNN's Tonight, reporting each night on the nation's top stories. Lemon's in-depth and sometimes controversial reporting made him a household name. And lastly, Roland Martin, a journalist, author, and activist, is a host of TV One's New One Now, a weekday morning news show that covers current events. Roland Martin is a dynamic and engaging journalist who offers a fresh perspective for the 21st century viewers. Tamron Hall, Dawn Lemon, Roland Martin, and one day you will be a well-versed media contributor. I'm Ilani Romney reporting for RWN. Happy Black History Month, Richard Wright. RWN is just getting started, and more is coming right after the break. Why he calling me? Oh yeah, we're gonna find out. Yeah. Didn't I tell y'all to stay off your phones? Yes, this is a reminder that no student should have uses of iPhones 4, 5, 6, or 7, iPods, MP3 players. Also, customers only use a Wi-Fi or Metro PCS, and Boost Mobile handheld devices are not allowed. Welcome back to RWN Square, your trusted source for Spartan News. I'm Tierra Gordon. RWPCS students visited the Health Means Business Summit. Joshua has more on this story. On Wednesday, February 15th, some of the Richard Wright students accepted into the Urban Health Media Project Program, co-founded by USA Today's healthcare policy reporter, Jane O'Donnell, accompanied her as photojournalist, with their photo credentials published in two USA Today articles covering the Health Means Business National Summit at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. The Health Means Business Campaign is an initiative led by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation with the support of the Robin Wood Johnson Foundation to help businesses become strong leaders in building healthy communities. At the conference, individuals representing various sectors of business, government, public health organizations, education, and media came together to connect and become educated on how to improve the health of all Americans. Richard Wright students met and conversed with many influential people, including Dr. Adams, Indiana State Health Commissioner, Dr. Reza Moray, President and CEO of Robert Woods Johnson Foundation, Ariana Huffington, founder of Thrive Global and founder of the Huffington Post, and Daniel Lubisky, founder and CEO of Can Snacks, about various health issues, especially those impacting young people. We were able to interview Alyssa Cohen, Executive Director for the Health Means Business Campaign about this transformational movement. So we see business as it having a huge role in impacting community health, strengthening education systems, and really starting from the ground up, right? We need to raise a healthier generation of, of kids and youth to be our future workforce and work for many of these businesses that are here in the room today. We learn many things from the speakers, such as Dr. Anna, on how meditation helps relieve stress, to the importance of mental and physical health from Dr. Murthy, the United States Surgeon General, the leading spokesperson on matters of public health in the federal government of the United States. And something that everyone should remember is that health means wealth 
and welcoming his health. This is Joshua Mitchell reporting for RWN Squared. RWN isn't over yet. Cameron Price is here with this week's Spartan Sports Zone right after the break. 25 plus 360 is 380, 25 plus 360 is 335. And that is simple math, ladies and gentlemen. Do you get it or not? Yeah, we get it. Yes, simple math, Bussy. Mm -hmm. Simple, right? Simple. Mm. Okay, how about I uh, simply give you a 55? How about that? Is that simple enough for you? Miss New Vice President? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that is. Son of a. Oh. Oh. What is going on? It is not a joke. The test is next week. <laughs> hey, Bussy. Chill, bro. <laughs> you an Asian? What? Asian, right? No, my name can Asian. Can Asian. Well, let me tell you something, Can Asia. You're gonna be outside in the cold, chilling. Well, if your butt don't get a good score on this test, cause you're gonna be homeless. <laughs> Yo, Bussy, it's not that serious, man. The SAT is always serious. Welcome to this week's Spartan Sports Zone. First, I know you like it's Roundtree, then it was Eugene and Jamil, but you know, it's Black History Month. We had to get some sexy chocolate in it. You know, that's me, your host, Cameron Price. Let's get started. Say Tobin. With sad news, the basketball season has come to an end for the Spartans. I would like to give a shout out to the boys and the girls because, you know, they did their thing by making it to the first round in the playoffs. But we ain't gonna talk about that score though. In other sports news, the All-Star Weekend was lit with Glenn Robinson III winning the dunk contest and Aaron Gordon, not Dante Gordon, cause he's not that good, did a little something with a drone. Check it out here. If he's got it, where know. is it? Does he have a drone for real, y'all? There it is. Yeah, from where? Right there. Oh, there it is. The Intel drone. What is that? What is that? Wait oh, a minute. Where is it? Oh, there it is. There it is. It's coming up right there. Okay. With a ball, too. Fresh oh, off the oh, Lady oh, Gaga oh, Super Bowl yeah. halftime oh, performance. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. I like oh, it. Okay. And he's got, if he lets the if he lets the ball hover over the rim, I like and the he dunks it. Ball one and lost it the same day. Oh, okay. See what I'm saying? In the All-Star game, East versus West, we all know who won. West side with the score of 192 to 182. And I would like to give a shout out to Anthony Davis for breaking the record of most points scored in the All-Star game with 52 points. And there was a lot of slam dunks out there. And here's a clip of that. It's showtime. Give me something. Anthony Davis, the ambassador, and knocks down the first shot of the 66th All-Star. That's what they came to see, AD. Use your speed. Let's go. Here's numbers for the East. Lob for James on the alley-oop from his teammate Kyrie Irving. The assists continue to roll. There's Westbrook from Durant on a beautiful feed. James off the window, gets it himself and flushes. Oh, didn't McGrady do that first? We're on the way to yet another record-breaking game. Giannis comes up with a steal. Step, move, step, move, move. Curry just looking to get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, smart decision there by Steph. Dang! That dunk was lit. I know you just seen that. I should have been out there, but you know, we're not going to speak on that. Anyway, college basketball is heating up with Gonzaga Bulldogs at rank one. And you better watch out for March Madness just slowly creeping up next week. I have my March Madness picks for you next week. And that's all, folks. I'm your host, Cameron Price, a.k.a. Sexy Chocolate. 
what else do we have for this week's edition of RWN Squared? I'm Josh Eames Buckets. And I'm Tierra Gordon, signing off for RWN. Stay classy, Richard Wright. <laughs>